Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Oops, that's pretty loud. Uh, my name is Sebastian Guesgen. I'm a committer PMC member on LibCloud, as well as committer and PMC member on CloudStack. And I'm going to talk today about uh, Apache LibCloud. Uh, Thomas is here as well. Uh, so two of us. Any other committers from LibCloud? No? Okay. Who uses LibCloud? Yeah, 50 people raised their hands. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you some, some background and some, some personal you know, thoughts about uh, cloud APIs in general and, and standards a little bit. And then I'm going to go into LibCloud, you know, what it is and the main, the main classes, the main methods that you can find, uh, how you can contribute to LibCloud, and then how uh, especially the CloudStack driver is, uh, is implemented. Um, but you'll see that pretty much it's the same thing whether whatever cloud provider you're, uh, you're using. Uh, I realized that I had the CloudStack logo on there. I don't have LibCloud specific slides, uh, but this is really a LibCloud talk. So background. Really when we talk about clouds, and, <coughs> and me in particular, when I, when I think about clouds, I think about Amazon. You know, uh, EC2, I mean S3 first, and then EC2 were really the first cloud services that came out in around 2006. So when I look, uh, when I think about cloud, I think about infrastructure as a service and I think about uh, Amazon. Uh, they keep on really leading the, uh, the field in clouds and you know, you, if you follow what they're doing, they keep on cutting prices and also they keep on uh, bringing up new services. So that's, that's I think something that's you know, really impressive about uh, Amazon is the, the amount of services that they have. Not only S3, which was their first service, uh, they're bringing up new storage services like Glacier, uh, Redshift, uh, CloudFront, you name it. So really they're bringing up a ton of new services. Uh, also in the, in the big data, uh, big data area with uh, Elastic MapReduce and uh, Redshift, as I said, Kinesis for real-time data, uh, uh, data stream processing. So, <coughs> you know, Apache is pretty heavy on, on big data these days when we look at all the projects that are available, you know, from Hadoop and the entire ecosystem. And uh, it's interesting to see Amazon coming up with all those big data uh, services. Uh, what's really key with all those services and, and the cloud is that they are offering an API, okay? Uh, so all those, you know, are accessed either, of course, through the Amazon uh, Management Console but also through uh, their API, which is you know, very involved. So now when we talk about APIs, uh, you know, I like to go back to uh, maybe 2005, 2006, and, and look at the, uh, the web services uh, era. Uh, you know, we keep talking about those cloud services as web services, but really there was a time when everybody was doing uh, software-oriented architecture and WS, using WS's, uh, WS uh, star standards with WSDL, SOAP, and so on. So if you look at you know, the different services that you needed, uh, notification, workflow, security, uh, SLA, and so on, uh, all these guys were basically trying to create standards. Okay? They were trying to use those uh, SOAP and uh, WSDL uh, defined services and there were, everybody was trying to uh, coalesce around creating standards for all of these. So WS security, WS management, uh, WS notification, and so on. And it was a real nightmare, okay? Uh, it was a nightmare to explain, it was a nightmare to use. Uh, but when uh, Web 2.0 came out, really, you know, it changed all of this. So the, the services that you are trying to implement were the same, notification, SLA, security, and so on. But suddenly, you know, we started seeing uh, a move from SOAP to uh, JSON and then pure HTTP with uh, various verbs, get, put, delete, update, you name it. So that's when REST came into play. And that really changed the landscape. So when we look at all those cloud providers now, they are basically presenting REST-like uh, APIs. And all the WS star world has largely been uh, abandoned. Uh, so that's, that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. If we look at uh, EC2, back to EC2, they, they had originally uh, XML, uh, yeah, SOAP, uh, SOAP service, and this is pretty small, okay, but I just took the snapshot uh, this morning where it says that they are abandoning their uh, SOAP service by uh, end of June, okay? 
they are abandoning that just for uh, in favor of their uh, query API. Uh, their query API is not really a, a RESTful API. It's not a clean REST API. Uh, it's really just you know HTTP, mostly GET, with just passing uh, key value pairs. If we look at a competitor of uh, EC2, so Google Compute Engine, they are much more RESTful, and that's largely because they came out after uh, EC2. So when, when they designed their, uh, their API, we, we, we can see that they used very clean uh, URIs to manage their instances, their firewalls, everything. And they also made use of uh, you know, the, the range of uh, HTTP verbs. So you know, get, post, but also delete, uh, patch, update, uh, you name it. So the, the, the GCE API is actually more restful. So that means that the EC2 API and the GCE API are different, okay? Uh, so that brings us to standards, really. And so that's the GCE logo. So I just discussed how these two are different uh, in design and then, you know, in syntax and also, you know, semantics and so on. Uh, and they're not standards. So we are seeing cloud, cloud standards being developed uh, these days, uh, mostly two of them, from uh, one from uh, DMTF, which is called CIMI, C-I-M-I, and then another one from the, from the Open Grid Forum, uh, OGF, which is OCCI. So again, what we're seeing is you know, interesting because now we have two competing standard organizations trying to come up with two standards because they say, well, look at the cloud providers. They don't, they don't have the same standards. They're not using the same API. So we're kind of back to that you know, war of trying to define a, a, a standard. But <laughs> the fact is that DMT, CIMI, and OCCI are not used very much. Okay? Who uses those APIs? Nobody. Okay? Uh, in production, I'm not aware of any cloud providers that uses uh, CIMI. I know the European Grid Initiative, in, uh, so in Europe, they use OCCI uh, quite a bit. But that's because they, you know, they, they care about uh, standardization. So the fact is that you know, EC2 and all the, the rest of the Amazon services is pretty much the de facto uh, standards. Uh, so that's the de facto standard, but GCE is coming up strong, and even Azure has its own API where you know, which gives you three very large public clouds with different APIs. So what's the answer to this? Uh, that's adapters, right? So we, we are lucky to have three big adapters and really the main adapters uh, in the field that are uh, in Apache. So Delta Cloud in Ruby, J Clouds in Java, and I think we, there was a talk on J Clouds earlier this morning, and then uh, Lib Cloud, which is uh, Python. And that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. There is another one which is pretty heavily used, which is Fog, uh, which is, again, uh, Ruby. Okay? So those are adapters in the sense that they are client-side uh, libraries that developers can use to basically talk to the variety of cloud providers using the same library. So they are trying to abstract the, those differences in APIs on all those cloud providers and giving you a single API that you can use to basically program and access those cloud providers using the, the same APIs. So it's a, you know, an additional level of abstraction to try to create a standard, but you know, again, they are not aiming to be, uh, to be standards. Another way to, uh, to look at this <coughs> is to, to think more in terms of interface, uh, and that's more of a server-side uh, system. So that's not LibCloud specific, but that's just to make a point that you can look at it a different way. So LibCloud, JCloud would be more client-side, and here are, for example, interfaces that we have in Cloud Stack. So one is an EC2 interface, EC2 stack that you can find on GitHub. And another one is a, a GCE interface to Cloud Stack, which we call the G stack. Um, OpenStack has similar interfaces. Uh, one, especially the GCE interface I know of, is done by the cloud scaling uh, company. So basically, those are little servers that you can, you can run locally on your laptop, or you can the cloud providers can run that server, and that server is going to expose an EC2 compatible or a G, uh, GCE compatible API. So if you use an interface like this, then you don't need an adapter like, uh, like JCloud, Fog, or, or whatever. Okay? So that's kind of you know, two different uh, possibilities if you're trying to get a single API for all those, uh, all those clouds. 
Okay? Make sense? Yes. LeapCloud. Okay? So LeapCloud is Python. Okay? Who uses Python? Yeah. Okay. So this is really a, a Python module, and it's great. Uh, it's great because pip install Apache dash LeapCloud, bang, you got it. Okay? Um, and it abstracts all the differences in cloud providers. What's interesting is that it's not, not only for basically software that allows you to build clouds, so software like OpenStack, uh, Eucalyptus, uh, Open Nebula, Open uh, CloudStack, but it's also an abstraction on top of you know, production cloud providers like SoftLayer, uh, GCE, Amazon, of course, Rackspace, you name it, okay? So any, uh, any type of cloud providers, whether it's real hardware, people who have real data centers, or if it's you trying to build a private cloud in your enterprise, choosing one of those software solution, you know, you can, uh, you can use LeapCloud to basically, um, you know, abstract the, the differences. Um, it's very handy, especially if you're trying to do a hybrid, hybrid cloud type solutions. So if you want to talk to EC2 and uh, also to your, uh, to your local cloud, your private cloud, then you can basically use a single application which is going to use the same methods, same classes, but talk to those different clouds, okay? So that's very, uh, very, very handy for that. What do you find in terms of uh, functionality? <coughs> uh, so you basically four, four types of functionality in LeapCloud. One, which is to manage compute nodes, and that's really the basic functionality of clouds, starting instances, stopping instances, uh, potentially configuring packages on those instances. Uh, data volumes, which is actually, it's actually functionality that's within the, uh, the compute driver, but it's basically create, creating volumes, uh, attaching volume to an instance, deleting volumes, you know, things like this, snapshots, and so on. Uh, you also have a DNS, uh, so you think uh, Route 53 uh, in EC2. Uh, Rackspace also has a DNS uh, service. Uh, and then the last one, the last uh, category is load balancers. Okay, so if you're trying to create load balancers on any of those, I mean, on some of those clouds, then you can, uh, you can use it, okay? So, of course, you know, all the cloud providers out there are not going to give you all that functionality, all those functionalities. So that's where you're starting to see, uh, to see differences. For example, the DNS provider in, uh, in LibCloud, there are, we only have six providers. Uh, so namely Amazon, so that's Route 53, Rackspace, uh, Linode, Zerigo, Gandhi, Host Virtual. Uh, and I don't use any of them. <laughs> uh, I think Thomas uses, no, you don't even use the Rackspace anymore, anymore huh? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, so obviously, you know, you only have, you know, six choices there, uh, but it's, it's already pretty cool. Uh, load balancers, you know, that doesn't come from every provider uh, either. But EC2, definitely, that's where you have elastic load balancing, so you get it. CloudStack also can do elastic load balancing. Rackspace, Ninefold, GCE, Google, Google Grid, Brightbox, uh, it's in there. The biggest chunk that you have in LeapCloud, the biggest choice that you have is in terms of uh, providers for, to manage instances. And there we have 40 different providers. Um, CloudStack, yay, OpenStack, Open Nebula from Spain, Rackspace, which is actually uh, inherited uh, from the uh, OpenStack driver, EC2, GCE, you know, you name it. Those are the main ones, but you get, you know, many more, okay? So who uses any of those clouds? Yeah? Okay. So your installation, as I said, is, uh, is pretty uh, simple. Uh, if you're just trying to get the package, uh, you know, with the pip, you can get it. Install Apache LeapCloud, you'll get the latest uh, release. Uh, but also from source, of course, you can uh, clone it from the uh, Apache uh, Git repo and then install it locally, okay, if you're trying to get it from, uh, from source. You can also clone the, uh, the GitHub mirror, okay. We are mirroring uh, our GitHub repository on Git, our Git repository on GitHub, so you could get it from from GitHub. And then once you install the package, just type uh, Python import libcloud and you're good to go. Okay. 
So once you do this, uh, what do you have? And I, I mentioned that you know, basically LibCloud is creating a common API on, to abstract the differences between all those providers. So we have a base API uh, with the you know, typical classes. We have a, a class for a node, uh, which is basically an instance, okay? a virtual machine running on those cloud providers. That's a, that's a node. Uh, the image, which is in EC2, that's machine type. Um, no, sorry, that's a template, um, AMI in EC2. So that's the node image. Uh, node size, that's the machine type. So that's where you have your small, your micro, your large, your whatever. That's a node size. Node location, that's the availability zone, uh, basically. Storage volume, that's your EBS volume. And node driver, that's basically the, the, main, uh, the main class that makes the connection to that cloud provider. So now that you have uh, those base uh, classes, what type of methods do you have, uh, you know, especially in that, uh, in that node driver class, the last one, which is the main, the main driver uh, class? So you have the common and the, the, the base API, which is fairly small. So, you know, of course, it's going to be lowest denominator. So, it, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty basic functionality. Uh, list nodes returns the list of all the instances uh, running, stopped, or whatever that you have on there. List, list images, all the templates available you know, to you. List sizes, list of all the machine types on there. List location, all the availability zones available. Uh, and then create node, that's the basic method to start an instance. And that method is gonna take, as input, it's gonna take you know, an image, so a node image instance going to take a size and, uh, you know, potentially key names, security groups, you know, things like this. Now, you can also destroy a node. Uh, some drivers then can also start, stop, you know, you name it. And then you have basic method for uh, volume management, create volume, attach volume. I think snapshots are, are snapshots on the, snapshots are on the base API? Yeah. So snapshots as well, if you want to snapshots your, uh, your volumes. Um, so that's the, that's the lowest common denominator you know, on, of all those providers. What we've seen recently is that we've decided to promote some new methods to the base API, because looking at uh, EC2, OpenStack, CloudStack, OpenNebula, I mean, those main drivers, which are the biggest one, are heavily used out there. Uh, they also manage SSH key pairs for access to instances. So we promoted some methods to the, uh, the base API. So all, all drivers in LibCloud uh, inherit those uh, or have those methods defined. So namely, list key pairs uh, returns all the SSH key pairs that may be defined. Of course, creating key pairs, uh, getting them. So that's a describe method on that key pair, and then deleting key pairs. We haven't promoted yet security groups, uh, so they are in some of the drivers, but we could probably see promoting security groups. And this is not static, okay? So as soon as we see that, you know, uh, the main drivers have, have implemented some of the same methods, we try basically to, to uh, synchronize all the, uh, the arguments, names, and so on, so that we can start promoting some of those uh, methods. Uh, deploying nodes, that's, that's another thing. So starting, a, starting an instance is pretty easy. That's the basic create node methods. You know, it's going to boot an instance. Uh, the deploy node is basically uh, a variant of this, which allows you to, you know, start an instance and then SSH into it, uh, transfer a script, and execute that script. So here, uh, <coughs> that's a little bit scriptic, but those are some of the uh, methods that we have on there to define uh, steps of configuration of a machine. WordPress here being basically a script, okay, that installs WordPress. I'll show you the example. And then here is a basic uh, method to deploy a node and actually run that script. So deploy node, you give it a name for the instance. Uh, you specify an image, specify a size, you know, micro, small, specify a SSH key pair. So here you see that this has not been promoted yet to a, to a, uh, a common uh, parameter, but so it's uh, ex as extension. 
specify a key that you're going to use to SSH into the instance. And then this deploy equal MSD, that's just basically a set of scripts that are you're going to configure. So this single line of code is basically going to start the instance, SSH into it, run the script, and, and configure with uh, whatever you, you have on there. So typically, you can think about uh, you know, Puppet scripts or whatever that you want. I should have talked about extension method here. I missed a slide. Uh, now, if you want to contribute to LibCloud, that's actually uh, very easy. And we have some pretty good documentation, docs.libcloud.apache.org. Okay, docs.libcloud.apache.org. That's a snapshot of the, uh, uh, of the docs. Um, I was looking at it yesterday, and I realized that uh, Thomas has made some amazing chapters on here, develop, well, that's cut, but committer guide and then development information. So it's very, you know, if you want to contribute, go through those, uh, those chapters and they're, they're, uh, they're very nice, okay? So it shows you how you can um, actually write, uh, you know, types of style guide you were using for, uh, you know, of course, pay, 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 pay it and so on. Um, but you can go through that uh, developer information. It's, uh, it's very uh, clearly explained how you can contribute patches. And then for the, the commuter guide, that's also to create releases and, and things like this, which is something that would happen you know, later if you were to become a, a, a commuter. Um, currently in CloudStack, uh, you know, we're heavily, we're, we're still using review board, Apache review board quite, quite heavily. Uh, here what I found, you know, I've been with LibCloud for maybe a year, uh, is that Thomas has been pretty good in accepting a GitHub pull request. So, you know, of course, the, the Apache Git repo is mirrored in GitHub. So if you clone that and you can submit a pull request, we get notified on the mailing list and we can, you know, very cleanly uh, test that pull request and apply it and close it, uh, you know, within the whole setup. So if you're familiar with GitHub, you know, that, that may also be a, a good way for you to contribute is just to go through the regular uh, GitHub uh, pull request uh, workflow, okay? Uh, one thing that's important if you're thinking about committing or submitting patches is that uh, we have pretty extensive tests. All the drivers on there, you know, they are between 75 and 95 percent unit test coverage, uh, you know, roughly. Uh, so the tests are online. So what we what we ask, and uh, and Thomas is pretty hard on this, is that if you if you come up with a new method or if you you know if you fix a, a problem or something. Uh, you need to also submit the, the patches, the, the tests, okay? So basically, new method gets added into a driver. It also needs to have the test. You need to have run the test because we're going to check uh, with Travis that uh, your patch, you know, of course, applies, uh, is PayPet compliant, and that the coverage runs and everything. But all of that is automated. So that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty good workflow. I'm, uh, I'm actually quite impressed by it and uh, I'm pretty happy about it. So GitHub in the integration, you know, that, that may be the, the path of least resistance if you're trying to, to contribute or, uh, or patch, you know, just go through the, the GitHub mirror. Okay? So that's the, that's the basic, uh, basic thing. So uh, what I wanted to do is go through a few things, you know, a uh, few examples of a driver looking at, uh, looking at CloudStack because that's the one that I, I know best. <coughs> and, uh, and then I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some demos. Uh, CloudStack has, uh, you know, pretty good support throughout the, uh, the cloud ecosystem. Uh, so, of course, we have all the configuration management system like Chef, SaltStack, Puppet. We have recipes for that. Uh, we have good integration. If those systems have uh, clients, for example, Chef has a, a knife client, uh, where you can add plugins. So there is a CloudStack plugin for, uh, for Knife, so that if you're trying to configure machines, uh, you, can, you can use directly their client. Uh, I contributed uh, dynamic inventory in Ansible, if you guys know Ansible. So it's, and, and I made it generic enough that it's actually a libcloud uh, specific. So even if you're not using CloudStack, but that you're using OpenStack or Rackspace or whatever, you could still use Ansible Dynamic Inventory, which is based on LibCloud. I think that's a good example of uh, how LibCloud abstracts the differences in API. 
So anyway, so we have a pretty strong ecosystem in, in CloudStack and, uh, and LibCloud is definitely one of them. So we want to make sure that you know, CloudStack is well supported there. Uh, we have examples of quite a, quite a few companies that are using uh, LibCloud to talk to CloudStack. Uh, you know, a few I know, Cloud Control in, uh, in Germany, uh, Slipstream in Switzerland. So they're usually PaaS-like systems that need some type of uh, underwear, if you wish, to talk to uh, infrastructure, okay? That's usually how it happens from an infrastructure standpoint. So Slipstream, uh, Cloud Control, uh, DV Cloud, I think also is using, uh, you know, LibCloud, uh, and uh, Cloudify. Cloudify from Gigaspaces, they are re-architecting their, uh, their framework and they are looking at LibCloud to, uh, to basically talk to, to multiple clouds. So CloudStack you know, has a very rich API, and again, like I said at the beginning, it's yet again a different API. So if you know EC2 or if you know OpenStack, it's a different API. It's HTTP, it returns JSON, but you know, again, it's different. So either you learn it or <laughs> you use LibCloud as long as what you're trying to do is going to, co to be covered by, uh, by LibCloud. So there's a CloudStack driver in LibCloud, and it's going to have all those base classes and base methods. But then what you're, what you're seeing is that we have extension methods, and that's really a LibCloud thing. So every driver is going to have those, those base methods implemented, and then it's going to have extension methods, which are things that are specific to that driver or that are not part of the, uh, the base API. So for example, in CloudStack, uh, in a specific network, uh, scenario, we have uh, networks, uh, so guest networks, you know, for, for the cloud. So there is an extension method which is always uh, ex underscore list networks, and it's going to return the list of all the guest networks, <laughs> okay? Uh, security groups, as I said, are not, are not yet part of, um, of the base API, but basically you would call ex underscore create security group, give it a name, a description, and that creates a security group. And actually, that's, this one is a good example because if you look at the EC2 driver, it's going to be the same call, okay? Same thing in EC2 if you want to create a security group in EC2. Create security group, give it a name, a description, and so on. So if you're using one provider and you find that the, there is a method that's missing, you're going you're gonna to find um, your way in basically adding an extension method uh, in, that, in that driver. So. Now, how do you instantiate those drivers? Uh, so that's Python. Uh, and I don't claim to be like uh, an outstanding Python uh, programmer, okay? But so that's, you know, fairly basic. Uh, import your modules, okay? And then you have a get driver method, instantiate that driver, which comes from, you know, provider, cloud stack. Uh, if you're trying EC2, I think it's gonna be provider.ec2 and then the, the zone. So EC2 West, EC2 East, and so on. OpenStack, provider.openStack. Um, so you get that driver, <coughs> and then you pass your keys, so all your API keys. So API key, secret key. Specify whether the connection is uh, HTTPS or not, okay? So you know, if you're doing it locally in test, you may wanna have it as secure equals false, which is probably not a good idea, but anyway and then define uh, host path. This is, I think, cloud stack specific, okay? Host and path. So that part is going to be, uh, might be a little bit different in other drivers. So once you have that, uh, that driver uh, instantiated, then just call list, co list location, list images, list sizes, list nodes, and so on. And then the basic functionality, you want to start a node, create node, give it a name, give it an image, uh, which is a template, give it a size, and then you can pass extra arguments. Um, and this is wrong, right? It doesn't work like that anymore. Um, in CloudStack, we also have different zones, so different types of zone, which is uh, a, a network, uh, network differences. So we have basic zone, which has layer three, isolation with security groups. And then we have advanced zones, which are basically VLAN uh, isolation, okay? So, in, uh, so to support basic zones, we have extension methods to manage security groups. So I mentioned create security groups, 
and then you're going to add rules. So authorize security group, and you define a rule, and, uh, and so on. And that's very similar to the uh, EC2, uh, EC2 driver. Okay? So EX lists security group, creates security groups, and here is an example of creating a rule. Uh, again, that is the same, that's the same method name in EC2. Okay? Uh, and then you pass a name, protocol, define the port. What may change compared to the EC2 driver, actually, the argument uh, names. But we're going to try to get, uh, you know, get all the arguments in sync there. And of course, you can delete security group. Advanced zone, as I said, uh, it's uh, isolation through layer two. So then you have methods that are specific to that type of zones. So list network I mentioned, list public IPs, create port forwarding rule, IP, allocate IP, release public IP. And that's similar to the EC2 driver that has uh, allocate IP, associate IP address, and, uh, and so on. Okay. So now let's look at inherited drivers. So the good example is the Rackspace driver, which is actually based on the OpenStack driver. So that's what I call inherited. So it's, uh, you know, they're based on the, so the Rackspace node driver is going to be a subclass of the OpenStack uh, node driver. Uh, in CloudStack case, we have, for example, one of them, KTU Cloud, which is supported in LibCloud. That's the Korean Telecom Cloud and that's uh, inherited from CloudStack. Uh, Thomas, a couple of months ago, created one for Ecula, which is a French cloud provider based on CloudStack. So you'll see in LibCloud an Ecula driver, and then an Exoscale one, which is a, a cloud provider based in, uh, in Switzerland, where I live, and <coughs> some good friends of mine. I think they're doing a great job, so I always do advertisement for them. <laughs> Uh, so basically what happens, like the small difference, you know, you, you, you can see the same uh, import, uh, you know, module import, get driver, now you have, instead of cloud side, you can have that Ecula or that uh, exoscale one. And you see that the driver then is uh, simpler just because basically the endpoint has, is hidden in the, in the class. So it just, it's just kind of a convenience uh, driver instantiation to kind of, you know, make it easier. Uh, here's exoscale, same thing. Put your keys, and the endpoint is uh, is hidden. Okay. Time for demos. Shall we do demos? Yeah. So go ahead, ask ask questions, guys. Okay, don't hesitate because I know it's kind of a going through a presenting a module like this is kind of. Yes. Like the YAM from Amazon? So the access control list? Uh, so when you use the driver, uh, you have, so you have the API keys, right? So the API keys, that's one thing. So every time you're going to make a call to that cloud, you need your API keys. When I, what I mentioned with the, the key pairs, that's really the SSH key pairs that get put in the instance so that you can connect to them. Yes. Uh, here we don't have we don't have any methods to manage or create API keys. So the u every user is basically going to use LibCloud with their own API keys.
So I'm not, no, I'm not aware of any SEL-specific methods. What happens, for example, with CloudStack is that uh, if a user you know, with his API key is, is trying to make a call that he's not authorized to do, but, but it's, he's not authorized on the CloudStack side, then th it's just going to give an error. Uh, that, that's really not on the Leap Cloud. I, I don't think that's a responsibility for Leap Cloud. It's, it's yeah. So, for example, EAM, IAM in EC2, that's, that's really the, what it's uh, used for. So, basically, for every API key, uh, you can define uh, access control and you can limit you know, what method, what function the user is going to be able to do. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas, we don't have a YAM. We don't have YAM uh, methods. Yeah. But right now, I would say it's very specific on each provider, so it's not defined in the in the base API. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now is some basic, like, it's a stupid script that I've written some time back. Uh, I'm using IPython to get a, an interactive shell, okay? So that's that IPython that you see there. I import the libcloud module. My keys are environmental variable. That may not be the best, but anyway. Uh, here you see the driver. I connect the driver. And then at the end, um, can you see that in the back? I just, can I, no. I create an interactive shell with Python. So the result is this. OK. So now I have an interactive shell. Uh, and that I have a connection object, which is basically an instance of the, of the driver made to my cloud. OK. So that's an instance of exascale node driver. And <coughs> I can see the, all, the, all the methods. So attach volume, create key pair, uh, delete key pair. I mean, you, you name it, right? So if I do uh, con list. What is good with the high Python is that I have a tab uh, completion. So list locations. So now if I do list locations, can you see that? Yeah. So it returns a node location uh, object, a list of uh, node location objects, which are basically availability zones. OK? Uh, if I do list nodes, it's going to return a list of node uh, instances. Maybe. There you go. OK? So I have a few nodes running there. Um, so let's do uh, con.list nodes. I should have done that before. And every node has extra attributes. Uh, so that's an example. So that's one node. And it has extra attributes. So you see his date, creation date, the UUID that was used uh, for the, that's the UUID of the template. So it's a Linux machine. It doesn't have any forwarding rules because it doesn't make sense in that case. There is a security group, which is default security groups. And its size is a tiny. OK? Um, if I go to my. There you go. So that's my uh, exoscale portal. So that's one of those cloud providers that uses CloudStack. You see that I have those two instances here, YoYo uh, -Yo and ExoBookSite. <laughs> okay. So what we can try to do is create a node. Uh, so that would be con dot create tab completion. You see. Well, let me let me do go through key pairs first. Then uh, list key pairs. So I should have a few key pairs on there. So I have a list of key pair, OK? So key pair objects. Uh, and to create a key pair, you just go, let's do uh, key.create. Uh, you see the key pair. 
and name Apache Khan. There you go. And key uh, as, for example, private key. Okay. So the private key is actually not stored in the cloud, but you see that when you call the get, get uh, create key pair, uh, it returned the private key. So you stick that in your uh, .ssh directory. And if I go back to my, uh, my portal here and I list my SSH key pairs, I see my Apache Con uh, one, okay? Uh, I could get the list again, list key pairs, uh, and I'll see the Apache Con one, which is the first one. And uh, how do I delete it? <laughs> delete key pair. It, that may not work if I need to pass a uh, well, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so keys. I think you need to actually give it the... Uh, is it key? Thomas, you remember? He's doing some... Key underscore what? Yeah, but the argument is... Key. So it's going to be keys. Okay. So I deleted it. Uh, kind of. Hopefully, it deleted the right one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just took the first one. Okay. So you get the idea, right? You get. You have all those methods in there, and. Uh, Create node, so let's do a create node quick. Uh, name, so you give it a name, foobar. Uh, you give it an image, so that would be a node image instance. So I kind of pre-created that image uh, instance. It's in my startup script. Uh, you know, pre-created the size. And then I'm going to give it a, the name of a SSH key pair, okay? So we try that. If I look at my script here, I, you see the, that image and that size have been defined before, okay? That, so that's just, uh, I use this kind of to, to debug things. If we go back to the, uh, to the console uh, instances and we have foobar that just started. Okay, foobar just started, so that should have returned. Here we go. Okay, and we can check the public IP, 1928.94, it's this one. Okay, questions? Pretty easy, okay. Um, I did the same thing quick with EC2. So again, uh, basically a IPython interactive shell on 2EC2, the US West region. So I don't have any instances running and let's look at, for example, where are key pairs, key pairs. That's the easy one to test. So you see on Amazon, I have Apache, Apache one key pair and now I have my shell. Uh, it's the driver, I, I called it driver. No, I didn't call it driver. Called it driver, yeah. So now I have a driver instance, which is a connection to US West, okay? So now, for example, if I want to do, I can do the same methods, so list locations. No, wrong. <laughs> so you get same type of response than with the cloud stack exoscale. You have a list of EC2 node location, and here you have all the uh, EC2 availability zones, okay? Um, so now by default, I'm, at, I'm on US West. 
So if I do create driver create key pair, you see that I have the same I have the same function name create key pair foobar. Okay. Private key. And if we go to the management console on key pairs, I should have a full bar key pair. <laughs> no? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it worked. <laughs> okay? So, I mean, uh, you guys are not excited? I just created a key pair on Amazon. <laughs> I'm surprised. So anyway, you get, you get the idea that we, it's the same call, you know, whether you're using uh, Exoscale, which you guys have no clue about, or, you know, Amazon, okay? So let's try to create uh, a node on Amazon. Uh, so let's look at the instances. I have none running. I just did this this morning, so hopefully name. I think I did the same thing. Image equal image, size equal size. Oof, that was fast. Oh yeah, there's a refresh. I had to reactivate my Amazon uh, account because I don't use it. So you see the instance. Uh, started uh, obviously looks like a, a synchronous call, but you get you get the idea, okay? We keep so key pair, same thing. Security groups, same deal. The one thing the the one thing I want to uh, to show you is the deploy. Um, so can you see that more? So I, I, I stuck a little bit of bash here in that, in that script, uh, just doing an update and then cloning a, a little Git repo that sets up WordPress and then and runs Puppet to, uh, to apply it. So if we look at the, uh, the script, that libshell script, uh, I'm opening that WordPress bash script and then I'm, I'm sticking it in that multi-step deployment uh, object, okay? So with libcloud, as I said, you can do a uh, configuration. So let's go back to my shell on exascale, which is this one. And this one I need to remember. It's kind of test deploy. So we give it a name, image, uh, image, size, size. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So we want to be able to SSH using a key pair, so we need to to say use this key pair. And that's where, you know, on the cloud provider side, that's where it's going to use cloud in it to basically get that key pair and stick it in the right place, okay? Uh, and here, uh, we have to check that, Thomas, that's kind of weird. Uh, pub key identity, that's where I give the path to, oops, no, that's not what I want. That's where I give the path to the, uh, to the private key. Because you need the private key to be able to SSH into it. And then in the deploy argument, I give it that MSD, which is that uh, multi-script deployment object, okay? So what that's going to do is hopefully start the instance and then run that Puppet script for WordPress. So I'm going to deploy WordPress in the cloud and that's when you guys should upload very loudly, if that works. Okay, so it's starting. Uh, it's gonna take a little bit more time uh, because, so test deploy, so already that's, that's running. Ubuntu machine. That cloud is a little bit interesting in the sense that, I mean, it's kind of like EC2, you get a public IP when you start your instances. So in the driver, we had to play a, a few tricks because Sleep Cloud can make a difference between public IP and the private IP of the instance. And <coughs> we had to, 
to do a few tricks to basically uh, make sure that LeapCloud was recognizing that this, this IP was, a, was defined as a public IP. Uh, in CloudStack, yeah. So basically, you know, uh, I haven't checked the EC2 driver. I don't know why the EC, so it looks like the EC2 driver, I mean, it returned really quickly when I did the create node. Uh, but basically, it's all uh, synchronous. So it's going to block until it returns. And the way CloudStack works, uh, it, it has asynchronous calls, and you get a job ID, and you can pull that job ID for, for finishing, for completion. Oh, I don't like the red. Oh, no, that's good. Yay! So it returned the node object. Da, 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 da. And that's the IP. Let's go to port 80. Yeah! <laughs> OK, how to deploy WordPress in the cloud with LeapCloud in right, two minutes. OK? Uh, so you get the node, okay? What's interesting is that there is, you see in the script, you see, I mean, can you guys see this? At, can you guys see this from the back? That, that script deployment here? Um, you can get the standard out. So script that's standard out. You can get the standard out from, you know, when it went through all the puppet and the, uh, you know, you see the, unpacking of the, the uh, app get update, and then you see the uh, MySQL, blah, blah. Okay, so you get access to the standard out. And I think that's it for me. If you have any questions. So that's implemented. I mean, we have exception handling, um, but depending on each driver, it may not be, it, you know, implemented uh, perfectly. Uh, I don't know, Thomas, you want to? One more. Well, thanks, guys. And if you have more questions, you know, just reach out to uh, Thomas or I, and uh, and then check out LeapCloud. It's very easy and it works. <laughs> thanks.